Joining us now is a man who is probably going to tell me to cut the Sally Sunshine routine and get real. Nobel Prize winning economist and New York Times columnist Paul Krugman. He's a professor of economics at Princeton University. Paul, thank you very much for coming back on the show. Well, hi. Good to be on. Are you here to kill Sally Sunshine? Are you here to tell me that people uh, feeling better doesn't really matter? Uh, yeah, basically. I mean, you know, what, what are you going to say? Uh, it's not, look, the, the, the trouble is, uh, you know, uh, better to have people slightly optimistic, you know, sheer panic is not good for anything. But um, the fact of the matter is we, we have some real, real problems that are not going to go away through self-fulfilling optimism. You know, one of the little things that, that's been reported now is the IMF has now, uh, International Monetary Fund has upped its estimate of uh, losses on, the, on bad loans to uh, $4 trillion. You know, that not so long ago, one trillion was considered an exorbitant estimate. So the, the problem is that, that there's a lot of real underlying mistakes that were made that have landed us in this mess. And the public's optimism is good. Uh, people believe that Obama is likely to do the right thing. That's all good, but it's not enough. Let me ask you about one other thing that looks from a distance like a silver lining that maybe isn't. Last fall on this show, I remember asking you what I should watch for uh, as an indicator rather than the Dow. The Dow is something that people are very emotionally right. rewarded by. They're very cued into that on a day-to-day -day basis. But you suggested that watching the credit markets would be a more realistic thing to watch in terms of understanding the economy. New York Times today ran something that says muted signs of life in the credit markets. Is that a reason for yeah. optimism? Yeah, that's that's certainly better news. I mean, instead of things getting steadily worse, yeah, the Dow is terrible, right? The stock market, by my count, has predicted six of the last one recoveries, right? It, it, it doesn't mean anything. But the uh, but but the credit markets are a little bit better, which still means that they're inconceivably bad by normal standards. I mean, loans are harder to get. Uh, perfectly legitimate business projects can't get funded, but that line has moved a little bit, you know, that we're, we're dropping, that the, the overflow pressure or whatever is, is dropping a little bit. So that's good. That's real progress. Uh, some things are improving, uh, or maybe the right way to say it is that things are getting worse more slowly, which is a good thing. You described, though, that essentially the main problem here is that we did some things really, really, really wrong. We made huge errors. And part of what has to happen now is that we not only need to recover, but we need to put things back together in a way that rights those wrongs. What do you think the priority should be policy-wise for the administration in fixing stuff that's really wrong? I think that we really need to completely overhaul the way we regulate the financial system. I mean, that the there one of the things, you know, we could snatch defeat from the jaws of victory here. If we get an economic recovery but we don't actually fix that system, then the same thing's gonna happen to us. You know, we, we have we've been we spent the last twenty years lurching from bubble to bubble, basically is the is the description. And if we don't fix it then that'll happen all over again. So we, we need to really it, tighten the regulation. You have to make sure that people who lend money have to keep some stake in the loan so they don't sell off the whole thing and then forget about it. Uh, you know, the, the excesses that got us to this point are ready to do it to us again, even if we get out of this current, uh, current trap. Do you feel like what's being put together thus far by Treasury Secretary Geithner and by Larry Summers and others uh, doesn't take an antagonistic enough approach toward regulations, but also doesn't set up the incentives correctly? Yeah, I think that they are, you know, these are, these are smart guys, uh, ask them, they'll tell you. Uh, but, but there is this sense that comes from the administration still that they basically see this as, well, there were a few wrong turns taken. A few things went, went wrong and we'll do a, some, some minor patches and we'll throw a bunch of money at this to get the thing restarted. But yeah, they, I am not hearing both what, you know, what, what you, what's in the public domain and the, the, the murmurs I hear, that they are not really looking for a root and branch reform, which is disturbing. We've heard now that they are not planning, the Treasury Department is delaying the release uh, of yeah. the results of these stress tests for the banks. Do you know what, why that might be and do you have an opinion on that? No, but I think we can say pretty clearly that if the stress tests were saying that everything was fine, uh, they probably wouldn't be eager to uh, postpone the release of that. And, you know, this is a problem because uh, suppose that, you know, one of the versions that we're hearing is that they'll release some generic information but not information on particular banks. And boy, will that be a downer. That will be saying that basically they're still, you know, what everyone's worried about is what we 
talk about Japan in the 90s, keeping the zombie banks still shambling forward. And there's a lot of feeling that we've got our you know, American zombie banks uh, now on the march. And this news was not good. It, it, it made that scenario look a little bit more likely. Brains. Brains. <laughs> sorry. Sorry. Yeah, sorry. No, it's, it's, I mean, what can you say? There's a lot of Night of the Living Dead in the way we all talk about the economy these days. Yeah, wow. Not, not heartening, but it's good to know. Uh, Paul Krugman, Nobel yeah. Prize winning economist, New York Times columnist, thank you for your time tonight. It's always great to have you on the show. Good to be on.